Okay, to start with, I'm going to start with SLOs, um, reflecting on them. Uh, I did two of them, one was for sewing. Um, while the students were able to complete their projects, which was the goal of the class, um, I do not think, based on observation, that they would be able to do another one independently, which was kind of the secondary goal, I guess. Um, this was in large part to my um, emerging effectiveness in instructional strategies and planning and creating authentic learning experiences and open-ended learning opportunities. I think that I kind of hindered their learning a little bit um, by not clearly explaining enough the base knowledge that they needed to read patterns and construct their pajama pants that they made. Um, and I often just kind of gave them the answer without letting them kind of struggle through it themselves. And part of that was just the class size and management fee. Um, but because of that, this led to the completion of the project because I would say, okay, go do this, go do this, go do this, show them exactly what it was step by step by step. Um, but that also led to them not being able to complete a project independently on their own. Um, my foods class, I did another one for foods one. And there was a lot of improvement made between the pre-assessment and the post-assessment. They definitely learned a lot, but it didn't quite meet the um, projected outcomes. Um, and I think this is because I focused more on making the food in the labs rather than balancing content and application. Again, kind of going back to the instructional strategies and planning, um, because of my emerging effectiveness and developing skill in observing and assessing individual needs, I did not actively seek out those who were struggling um, and provide additional support. Um, I didn't want to take them away from the food labs because I know that's where they wanted to be and that's where they get a, like their greatest learning. Um, but I didn't take them out and make sure that they were getting that base knowledge that they need, like equivalents and vitamins and all that kind of stuff. Um, I definitely think that my assessments are still weak in kind of understanding or assessing how a kid learns best, whether it's like audiovisual, kinesthetic, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's not blah, blah, blah. But anyway, um, but also being able to use personalized learning and differentiated learning. Um, that's also emerging effective. Uh, as far as student surveys go, there were two percentages. Um, that were, that kind of stood out to me. One kind of made me laugh. Um, it was 76% and it's the one where it talks about um, the students well behaved in class and the other student said that 76%. Um, I've also done some personal surveys where I would have the students tell me, okay, what's one thing I did well, one thing I can improve on, and then they would either write it down without their names on it and submit it to me and I would just kind of read them and hopefully self-assess a little bit and try and get better. And <laughs> the two things the students would suggest would be to be stricter with students and to kick kids out of class, um, which I'm not going to kick kids out if I don't have to. Um, but anyway, I think the biggest thing that I learned from that percentage was while the personalities of the kids impact my classroom, I am the denominator, and ultimately it's up to me and my clear expectations that dictate how the class will go that day. Um, one thing that I need to be better at is recognizing like when kids need to get sent to the office. And that sounds kind of funny, but I don't really know that line. Um, and looking back, I didn't use that resource at all um, when I should have. Um, I was just trying to fight it on my own and trying to... I was, I was just trying to do it on my own because like, I can fight my own battles, but I also get in this mode where Either I can do it or I can't, and it's kind of a bad all or nothing thing. Um, so two takeaways from that percentage are I need to have clearer expectations so that I know what I'm going to do when things aren't going the way I want them to, but also I need to use um, my support systems better. Um, the other one was about 82% um, said that they felt like I involved them in class discussions and activities. And this is a number that I want to improve. Uh, I want to keep phasing away from the death by PowerPoint method. Um, I don't think it's like, okay, it's a bad method. But it is a method that, like, if I'm absent, I can put it on Canvas and then have them kind of work through some kind of note system using the PowerPoint to learn information. But it's definitely something I don't want to use in my class as much. Um, and I need to have more meaningful experiences. Um, 
a word of caution to myself is I need to remember that I'm not reinventing the wheel. Um, and that's usually what gets me overwhelmed is I need to remember that it is okay to use activities someone else has come up with. Um, but I also need to remember that it's okay to fail <laughs> and that I don't like it, but that it's okay. Um, so moving on from student surveys, most of them were good. I don't really understand the whole cues thing. So I am assuming if I put it on this video, Roy's going to come and tell me soon. And if he doesn't, I will tell him to tell me soon. Um, the question on how does Roy need to help me, or the question about Roy. Um, so I'll start with like good things that Roy's done for me. Um, I know I can go to him, well, Roy and Mike and Kyle and well, pretty much anybody. Um, but I'll just focus on like Roy for this. Um, I know I can ask questions and that he'll always give me honest answers. Um, I never feel demeaned or like a second class teacher. I like that I can like joke around but also ask like a serious question sometimes in the same conversation. Because sometimes you get in the middle of a serious conversation and it's just, you just kind of have to laugh and break it up a little bit. So I'm glad that I can do that with Roy but still maintain like a professional atmosphere. Um, I also respect that Roy doesn't uh, underestimate me and is also able to maintain realistic expectations of me. Um, and a large part of that is like clear expectations, which is really nice. Like I know exactly what he expects of me for next year. I know exactly his main focus for my first year. Um, as far as things to help, there's kind of two main things. Um, one is like I still get a little bit intimidated in conversation and sometimes struggle to ask like a specific question or describe exactly what it is that I'm thinking um, or what my misunderstanding is. And so there's like there's been a couple times where I try and explain it. And Roy, like, jumps in because he thinks he understands, but he doesn't quite understand. Um, and then an hour or so later, the question I was originally asking gets answered when I just needed, like, two more minutes to really try and explain what I was guessing or try and what I was struggling with. I'm not even explaining it now very well. But anyway, um, I just get too nervous to interrupt and be like, no, Roy, you're not understanding me because Roy would probably argue back that, yes, he is understanding. But anyway because this is a video, I'm just going to say I'm right right now. Um, but sometimes the long-winded answers are like too much. My brain shuts off, usually about the 30-minute mark. Um, but I like the conversation. Conversation is one of the better ways that I learn, so I, like, I need the conversation. Um, I just need them to be like a little bit shorter. <laughs> yeah, I just need to be shorter, and that's something that I've joked about with Lloyd, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, one thing I think would help me as I go into my second year that I wish I would have had more of my first year would be to, like, check in more with people. Um, and this isn't necessarily, like, Roid specific, but I'll just say it's Roid. Um, like, I would like to meet, well, I did this with Crystal a little bit, um, but not quite to the level that I wanted. And looking back, I didn't recognize what I wanted yet. Um, but going into my next year, I'd like to meet more regularly to report something I tried and how it worked and discuss any concerns. And again, I know that's what I was supposed to do with Crystal, um, but it just didn't quite happen to the level that I wanted. And again, it's not any fault of hers or mine. I just, I, anyway, I'm going to keep going. Um, sometimes in the CTE building, I feel a little bit detached and kind of in a funny sense. Sometimes I wonder if Lloyd's even alive because um, there would be like three weeks where we didn't hear from him. Um, and I think another thing that I need to like figure out is how I can make the culture that we're moving towards at GRAB fit into my high school, not my high school, into my classroom. Um, I just, I haven't really ever seen that in a fast, I see bits and pieces of it in other fast classrooms, but I have, I, I don't quite know how it's going to look in my classroom. Um, Anyway, again, just like regular meetings and trying things and having someone to report to and be like, okay, this worked, this didn't. Um, just like, again, it kind of goes back to that conversation. I do really well with conversation. I learn pretty well with conversation. Um, a big goal of mine for next year to wrap up is I'm, I kind of want to focus on standard three, which is expectations, routines, procedures, and rubrics. Um, focusing on a specific direction, specific and intentional lesson plans, and help kids learn to honestly self-assess. And I want to break out of survival mode even more. And survival mode and emergent effective to me are kind of the same. So I want to break out of that. Um, I still have a lot of preps, but I'm still excited for next year. And I'm excited to see how I 
change and grow as a teacher through failures and successes and pretty jazzed for next year. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's gonna be a lot better than this year, so I'm looking forward to it.